What we saw from Ilya Teporia tonight was something special. Obviously, it came up against a very special former now champion in Alex Volkanovsky. Chael, you've always got thoughts on things. What did you think about Ilya tonight? Can I start with this? I know that I am as guilty as anybody of having a very short-term memory when it comes to this sport. I feel, standing in this moment, that is the greatest UFC that I have ever seen. And if you want to start with the main event, it had a surprise. They were in <laughs> round two. I gave round one to Volkanovsky. And I only offer that because I don't, I'm not going to have any part to do with he's out of his prime or he's lost a step. That's not what I saw. I saw a better fighter in Teporia. I didn't know he was this good. I got introduced to Teporia by Patty Pimlet, who nicknamed him Mr. Water Bottle after they got in some kind of a... Yes. Remember that water bottle fight? And I go, of course. I go look Teporia up, and he was 12-0, and 0 and I couldn't believe it. I think, wow, this guy's incredible, but he was a different weight class than Patty. Now, here you are. Fast forward 18 months. He's a main eventer. He's still undefeated, and Gil, now he's world champion. Oh, super impressive, Ilya Teporia. I've known he's a great boxer, but his patience, his composure, just stalking the champion down, not just jumping the gun too soon, just waiting for his opportunity. And when he did get his opportunity, he let his hands go. And when you see in that combination he threw, he did not take his eyes off the target at all. Even Volkanovski took his eyes off just a little bit, but Ilya Teporia, his composure in the chaos in the phone booth, his eye contact is second to none. Just such a slick, great, great performance tonight. I'm, I'm very impressed by his performance. And now we're going to be bringing in uh, the voice of the Octagon, as we always do, John Anik, who was sitting, of course, cage side, calling the action. Um, I mean, really, really fun fight to call. It was very, very clear, John, I thought in the beginning how confident Ilya was. You know, sometimes you see guys talking all week about how, about their confidence, not necessarily showing Alex Volkanovsky the respect that some felt he deserved, but he didn't show him any respect inside the octagon. And I think a lot of people maybe maybe rubbed him the wrong way that he was not showing Alex the respect that he deserved prior to the fight. But then once you get in there and you're not showing that guy respect, then the fans kind of love that, right? Yeah, well, Alexander Volkanovsky in our fighter meeting, and always great for me to come up and decompress with you guys. But Volk was very appreciative of Ilya Topoli's ability to build this fight. And I didn't think he was necessarily getting ahead of himself when he called for an early knockout. You know, for a man his size, I got to say, his hands are massive, right? Volkanovsky is the naturally bigger man. But certainly in terms of speed and power and just overall athletic gifts. I felt like Ilya Topuria had those advantages, but you still got to go out and do it. And as much as we want to credit Volkanovsky for just his collectedness and being so calm in the moment, I mean, it's like I said on the I was like more nervous than he was, but Topuria is very much cut from that cloth as well. And what's so cool about Topuria is that, uh, and, and maybe some of the reason why people were potentially overlooking him in this fight is because he hasn't fought any of the top guys. So now he's got a new champion. There's just a plethora of different contenders coming for him to face. Gil, when you were watching this fight unfold, you know, Chael mentioned that he actually gave the first round to Volk. How are you sort of watching? What did you think was kind of the rhythm of the fight up until the finish? Yeah, I thought Volk had a great approach with the jab, a lot of movement, trying to strike but not box with Taporia, right? Attacking the lead leg, trying to throw the left kick up there. But as soon as they kind of got close, I can kind of tell Volk was a little bit uh, chaotic during that, a little nervous in those exchanges and wasn't really biting down his mouthpiece, avoiding the strike and all. But I thought he was winning at the beginning, had a great game plan. Didn't box them clinch, dropped some knees. I wish he went for the double leg, try to add that wrestling in there. But again, Tapuria's composure was great. I'm not taking nothing away from him. Uh, Volkanowski is coming back from that loss. But again, Tapuria was stalking him. He was pouncing on him, and he did a fantastic job. Yeah, and you gave me a good segue into that, Gil, because I wanted to ask you, Chael, um I don't think anyone's going to take anything away from Ilya. That was just a beautiful performance start to finish. But there was the caveat that Alexander Volkanovsky took this fight relatively quickly after what happened to him against Islam uh, Makachev. It was a very different year in his career last year, losing twice up a weight class. What did, did you think that had an impact on the fight at all? Well, I will say this. I thought that Volkanovski looked really good. I thought he was winning the fight. I thought that jab was great. I did expect him to wrestle a little bit more. I thought his conditioning was holding up. And speaking of conditioning, very telling for me, but was the post-fight interview by Taporia. He spoke so calmly. I think I'm more out of breath right now busy <laughs> with you guys <laughs> yeah. than perhaps I would agree he with was. That, yeah. Volk almost anointed himself the number one contender for a rematch. <laughs> I certainly don't disagree with that. I won't predict for you uh, that we're not going to uh, have a little bit of parody, maybe even uh, visit Max Holloway if he has a, a good performance at 300, but I do think that Featherweight is, is thriving right now. I think it's in a very good spot, and it's got a new king. Yeah, and we will be doing some matchmaking here in a second, but I want to talk a little bit more about Volk. Gil, something sticks out to me when I was, uh, you know, kind of gearing up for this fight, uh, asking some people about this fight, and it, was, it came from Dean Thomas, and Dean said, you know what? 
I think that, that Volk absolutely has a chance to get it done. I mean, every, all of the, the focus on the, he's 35 now and that stat and everything. But Dean said, I think he can get it done. I, I like his chances. I think he's got one more night in him. However, if it doesn't go his way, I think there's a possibility that we could see him fall off a cliff, that it could be the end will come very, very quickly. And now we are looking at a situation where he's lost three of his last four, his last two by knockout. Dean Thomas is a very bright man. We have him on this desk all the time. What do you think about that? Do you think that there is a possibility? Do you have concerns now that Volk, not only has his title reign over, but Volk, as we sort of know him, is over? Yeah, that's a tough one. You know, he's had a tremendous career, you know, uh getting that first knock. If he lost to Makovic, Makachev initially, I, I don't think everyone would think that, but, um, you know, I, I, I do believe that uh, I, it could be the end for him, right? I think he needs to readjust. Maybe get some new life, go to 155 pounds where he can get some motivation, but I don't think the motivation is there at 145. If he beat Taporia, I think he would have kind of cleaned out the division, and I think his only choice was to go to 155. It's hard to find that drive, that motivation to, from that first fight when you first fight for the title, so I think he needs to find that motivation. I think that motivation is going to be at 155 pounds.